Thank you. <clears throat> it's uh, really an honor to come here and uh, uh, I'm really thankful to BIKN and its leaders and various uh, members of BIKN for uh, this uh, great opportunity that you have given us, given me and my union and the members to come and share the good news that basic income is a good idea. It's not just the good news that um, we think it's good news, but it is based on a scientific study that we have done. And uh, there is the evidence. Um, and uh, there is the recent, the book was published last year, last December. It's available and all the statistics and correlations and uh, statistical analysis, everything is in the public domain, it's available. And uh, this is just a brief version of the actual report. The actual report is about 1,000 pages and another 500 pages of qualitative data, which is uh, now available on UNICEF website. You can go to UNICEF website and ask for uh, basic income India Indian pilot. You can download the entire thing. Uh, and uh, there you have rich data, rich material analysis and all the uh, how we have done the survey. Uh, this uh, massive study that we have undertaken which involved about 200 people on the field apart from a lot of members helping us. Uh, it's, uh, it's called the transformative and emancipatory potential uh, because the, the most important point that we are trying to say through this study is that there is a trans it can transform the lives of the poor. Um, now, as I said, that uh, uh, we are all coming to basic income from our own locations. Like in the morning, Eno said that uh, we all have different languages. Similarly, we all have different contexts from where we are coming to the idea of basic income. Some are coming from the point of unfreedom to freedom. Some are coming from the point, point of the, um, the poverty of the elderly. Some are coming to the point of, from, from the point of the really the half the population is poor. So poverty elevation. So before I go to the actual study that we have done and what the study is trying to say, I would like to briefly portray the context in which we have thought of this idea, we have thought of this uh, massive experiment. If this study was done by Self-Employed Women's Association, SEVA, which has 2 million uh, members all over the country. And uh, uh, the idea of uh, pilots has come yeah, as a part of this union's search for alternatives. Uh, because as a union, what it does is it, 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 it uh, does advocacy at the policy level and at the grassroots level so it caters to the members in terms of accessing their welfare, day-to-day -day welfare benefits. Because people have entitlements to welfare doesn't mean that they automatically get their welfare benefit. So the union does a lot of work at the grassroots level. So it is, uh, but then the, the very system, the social protection system that India has is riddled with problems and what should be uh, delivered to the, to, the, to the poor or to the citizen does not always go. There are serious problems, we will come briefly to that also. So in the light of those problems, unconditional cash transfers, what we call, that was the term we used in the beginning. Unconditional cash transfers seem to be a good idea to bypass those problems. Now. After the study, when we saw that the study has shown some extremely positive results. When we saw those results, we realized that it's not just a question of delivery. And our interest at that point was only welfare delivery. We realized that we are dealing with something much more than just delivery. We are dealing with something like something as important as a human dignity, human freedom, and human emancipation because the four-year study has thrown up all these questions as part of our work. 
That, that is when we decided that we should call it basic income. So that's how the book and the report is titled as basic income. I call 3D because the Indian social problems, so social protection problem, the next one, has three Ds are there. One is the design problem. There's the severe design problem, the next one. Yeah, go on. The, the system uh, was designed to do commodity transfer. What uh, yesterday we were talking about, that basic income, um, a Chinese professor was saying basic income in kind. Uh, and then it is full of conditionalities that you have to fulfill X, Y, Z and a long list of conditions before you can say that you are entitled to this. And it is demand-driven schemes. Most of the schemes assume that the person, the person who is entitled, will have the power, will have the uh, the capacity to come and make the demand and then take it from you. Most of the people you are targeting, they don't have that kind of power. They cannot come and fill the form. They cannot come and when you are unwilling to give, they cannot come and make the demand. And when you are corrupt, they cannot come and fight with you. So you are dealing with those people and those people... Uh, so that is also part of the design problem. That you make it demand driven, which means that people should come and demand only then I'll give. Okay, now uh, the third is the definition problem. The definition problem is that how do you define who are the poor? This is a problem, this is a question India has not been able to resolve after 65 years. I think they are still struggling to find out who are the poor. And the poverty rates go up and down, not based on whether people are poor or not, but it's based on the definitions that you are giving. You change the definition, that statistics will show that 30% are poor. You change the definition, statistics will say that 40% are poor or 20% are poor. So that is the kind of thing. So uh, this quick, I'll quickly try to explain that half a dollar a day is a kind of a threshold in 2014, government tried to say that anybody who earns half a dollar a day in the rural areas is considered to be poor, by which already 300 million people are poor, which means one third, almost one third, one fourth of the population. Then the, the definite, uh, so yeah, this causes, the whole point of definition causes inclusion and exclusion errors. Which means, when you get into that game, you include those who do not deserve and you exclude those who actually deserve to be inside. So these are very serious problems of inclusion and exclusion. Then the third is the delivery problem. Yeah. That is how to give what you want to give. The, the, the kind of the current system, the way they try to give is they try to transfer food grains to the poor. The very fact that the food grains are procured somewhere and then transported from hundreds of miles to the final destination and then the fact that they, they have stopped for such a long time and nobody cares for the quality, in any case it is going to the poor, doesn't matter, they can eat any, raw, any rotten stuff because they are so poor it doesn't matter. So quality really doesn't matter when it comes to the poor. It is there in the very bureaucratic mentality. So the, there is a huge erosion of quality. And then there is corruption. Corruption in the sense, the fellow who is agent who has to deliver is the one who doesn't deliver 100%. He tries to make his own small portion in that. Now, that's a big, the, this is an official statistic. You, we can, I, think I can give you a uh, um, citation for this that India spends 3 rupee 25 paisa to deliver 1 rupee welfare. Which means if you want to give 1 rupee to the poor, you have to allocate 4 rupee 25 paisa. And that 1 rupee, because of corruption, doesn't reach the poor. What reaches is 25 paisa. What are we talking? This is absolutely a ridiculous system. Okay. Now, let me quickly go through what are, where the money is going. Most important 
the big, big flagship programs where the money goes. One is the, what we call public distribution system, where the food grains are transferred. There is the BPL and APL. There is the below poverty line and then the above poverty line. The below poverty line are the poor, they get much more. Above poverty line also get small amount which they make it, they may not take. Okay. Now, then the ne next big amount goes into the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, which I said, as I said is, a, is also a demand driven program where um, it has many good points that for every household in a rural area, 100 days of employment is guaranteed. So they can make a demand and they can get employment and they can get paid for it. That also has its own uh, kind of problems. Then the midday meals program and then this is the free meals which we were discussing yesterday uh, for school children and then uh, pensions and scholarships and subsidies, these are all direct cash uh, transfers. This is the broadly the sub. The most important thing is that all are conditional. They are all conditional. And that is where when the moment you bring conditionalities, the, then you bring bureaucracy into place to determine who is eligible and who is not eligible, whether you are fulfilling the conditions or not fulfilling the conditions. If you are having a, a mobile phone, then you are not eligible. If you have a fan in your house, then you are not eligible. If you are wearing two pairs of clothes and not just one, if you have two sweaters, then you are not eligible. If you have three children, you are not eligible. So, conditionalities can re really make you go crazy. And the discretion is given to the local, the law and bureaucracy. And the law and bureaucracy can decide whether you are poor or not. Now, this is a quick uh, view on uh, where India stands. This is what India spends. India spends barely 1.7% of their uh, GDP for social protection. So that if you compare, uh, South Korea fares much better, much better, and China also fares much better. Um, so um, even that money, even that money that is allocated in the last 15 years, the money has increased enormously. This 1.7 was not 1.7 10 years ago. So it has it become 1.7. And India today has the capacity to make it at least 4%. Then in which case, there, there is huge amount of money for welfare, but the, the whole question is that how do you do that? What do you do? How do you give that? What is your new way of giving? Let's come to the, okay, the, yeah, the, the study itself. So that's the background, that it is from there we are coming and searching for alternatives and trying to see how we, we deal with the design problems, how we deal with the delivery problems and how we deal with definition problems. That is, who are really poor? Who should be actually supported? Who should be actually given what? So this is a uh, kind of a skewed up uh, uh, map. This is the central part. Madhya Pradesh was where the uh, study was done. This is where the Seva has about 6 million uh, members. Seva is a women's union. It works only in the informal sector. The main features of the study are uh, it's unconditional, it's a monthly transfer, it's an individual, it's given to the individual, each person is entitled to this, and it was given through a bank. Uh, I will come to that. There are two pilots actually. One is a big pilot and one is a smaller pilot. The smaller pilot was done in the tribal village and a bigger pilot was done in eight normal general villages. Uh, so, in the general villages, we have bigger pilot, we have done through bank accounts, it was compulsory, that money has to be given only through bank accounts. In the tribal village, which was just one village with 127 households, we um, uh, gave money directly, because there were huge logistic difficulties, uh, the bank was so far away and we also wanted to, having learned the lesson from this, if we have time I can go into that, uh, we, um, we decided that 
basic income actually should go into the hands of the people so that we go and study the effect of that money. If we say, if we have the bank in between and the bank says that, okay, this month you can't take the money because your balance is very small and you can't, you come once in three months, so the banks, we had this problem. Banks said that you come after three months. You collect once in three months because you don't have enough balance. The money we were giving was very small amount. And it was universal. In the villages, we gave it to the richest landlord, to the poorest person. <coughs> this is a big question, but uh, we have time, we can go into that, whether we actually can advocate universal basic income in India or not is a very big question. Yeah. That's what the pilot one is uh, eight villages, money paid, and equal number of control villages where money was paid because the study required a control group where money was not paid but similar in characteristics and tribal village, money paid, and uh, one where money was not paid, one control group. Yeah. Yeah, let's come to the amount we transfer. Uh, in the big, big pilot, <coughs> This is the money we gave. If you convert it into dollars, I had it in rupees, but then I thought it's easier for many people to. Uh, 3.2 adults, it was done in actually two phases. UNICEF was giving us money to do this uh, experiment. So, first phase was 12 months, it was originally for 12 months, but then we realized that uh, we should continue for some more time. 12 months is not, just not enough actually. Uh, so we, con we continued for another five months, but that time we, we increased the amount and gave a little more. And in the tribal pilot, we gave the same amount throughout the 12 months. And it was direct cash transfer. Now, just one second, can you go back? Uh, just to give you a reference, um, as I said earlier, that half a dollar a day is the threshold. So, um, per month, Less than $50 per month is the threshold set by the government that poverty. So our only uh, concern was that it should not be too small, so that then it becomes insignificant. It should not be too big, then uh, it can do other things. So somewhere we struck a balance. No, uh, these are the, this is the profile of beneficiaries. I think, uh, I don't think I should dwell on this. Let's move ahead. This is the total amount of money that we paid. Yeah, let's. Yeah, the study, the research study, it had, we started with a, a baseline and uh, there was a midline in the mid, midpoint, uh, slightly about after eight months, we did one uh, uh, study, a survey, and an end line after the survey. In fact, after the end line also, we did a post end line because we also wanted to capture people's perceptions after the project was over. It's a modified random control trial methodology. Uh, RCT methodology is a well-known methodology. Uh, I don't have to go into that. I think for that, it's all uh, the I will not go into the methodology that we uh, adopted in detail at all because it's available in the public domain. And then we also uh, had 100 case studies where we tracked families, 100 or uh, more than uh, um, 100 case studies, tracked the families, what was happening in these families from start to the finish. And even after one more year, also we continue to find out what, what actually were uh, the changes happening inside the household in terms of their thinking, their perception. Okay. Now, let us come to the uh, main findings. Now, all this uh, case material, which is about five, six hundred pages material, is available. Is available uh, on the net. Uh, if you go to UNICEF uh, website and ask for this report, that report has two annexures. Uh, one is the massive questionnaires that we have used and one is the case studies that. So there you have the intimate stories about what people were doing, what people were feeling about this and all that. Now let us run through some of these quick themes and statistics. Uh, 
See, one of the most important things that we were dealing with, we were concerned, is about the food, food and nutrition. Uh, now, one important thing we asked was the, whether the food sufficiency in the baseline at the time we start before we started the cash transfer, we started the basic income. Um, and the baseline, if you see, this person, the 52 person said that they had sufficient, and 44 said that they had insufficient food. And if you see by the midline, this IES is midline, interim evaluation, you, you can see the increase of perception of food sufficiency. What they felt that, okay, I feel I have better, more food, better food now. And you can see the gradual increase. Next, shall we go to the next one? This is the, this is the, uh, yeah. Can, can you go back? Yeah, this is the uh, control group. You can see the difference between uh, the first one and the second one. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, in the rural, in the villages, I think the way uh, the the thing is that when they have a little money, they want to acquire a productive asset. The first thing that comes to their mind is to buy a goat or a cow or a buffalo. And it actually, if you see the increase, this is the non-PI village and this is the PI village. You can clearly see the increase of, in the, if you see the tribal village, this is the tribal village. So if you can see the, the increase in the number of uh, livestock. You could actually, when you went into the village, you could actually see more animals. What is interesting is that these peat households, you can't buy a buffalo, uh, which is costs you about 50,000 rupees. What they bought was the native local cow. What is interesting is that native local cow, the milk it gives is not enough to sell in the market, which means they bought this cow for nutrition, to give milk to their children. That is how, if you see, I am not put the, uh, the Z square score uh, graphs here, which you can see in the book or in the report, that you can see actually the nutrition of children. We actually did weight and height of, measured weight and height of children, all the children in all these villages. It has actually improved, particularly the girl children's height, weight and height had improved, their nutrition had improved because of, so we thought it was just about livestock, but it, livestock actually translated itself into several things. Okay. If you see the, the other food uh, issue is um, increase in the food intake. If you look at the, the if, you, if you break down the food into different items, you could see people consuming more of pulses, more of um, milk and milk products because of I think they have they produce their own. You don't see much. You can see them more of. Uh, vegetables, more of egg, and this is really, really the big point. You can see alcohol consumption in the basic income village actually came down. And for us, it's because every bureaucrat, every politician we go through with this study, they say first they start with if you give money, they will drink away. The poor are there only to drink, the drink away, I think. So that's what they think. So we had to show statistically that it has actually come down. The reason, the reason for that is people have more productive work to do. When people have more productive work to do, they don't waste their time. So that's the... the so if you see the total increase of various uh, things, you can see that this was a big, very, very important. Uh, yeah, then I come quickly to um, what happened in the occupational. There has been an occupational shift. This also is a very, very significant uh, 
outcome of this study that at the beginning of the survey we asked people what is your primary occupation what is your primary occupation then they said I'm a wage earner or you can also have own a small piece of land but that is not your primary thing because you're not spending your bulk of your time there some people said it is farm farm now we try to measure that across the year what people were doing in this shift you could actually see that these are small farmers there was a shift to when they did the, the way they have reported you can see that more people at the end reported that my primary occupation is a farmer than in the in the beginning you see in the beginning this is the non bi where we did not pay the money these two there when we ask you can see the red one is wage laborer it is actually increased more people have reported that they are wage laborers in fact there is a decline here and here this is the basic income village you can see that this is so high 72 people in the beginning said that they are wage earners and it sharply falls down uh, what they consider there which means that this many people have been spending more time on their farm uh, this uh, look at the psychological effect of uh, the basic income which is what Eno was constantly trying to say in the morning that it is not just about the, the number crunch it's not just about the money it's about what it does to your mind when you know that you're going to get uh, mon monthly basic income for an extended period of time. Next. Yeah, so that, that is a, an occupation about the occupational shift, which is a very significant thing because I think there is a major criticism that if you give money, people will not work. People will become lazy, people will become alcoholics. But I think the, the, the results are quite contrary to that. But people start actually becoming more productive. People start actually planning and start looking at their own assets and trying to do more productive things uh, then there is the, this is another very very big uh, theme for in the villages if you see in the rural areas in India people live a life of debt you can you may say that even urban areas everybody lives in debt but there is a difference between their debt and our debt in the city even in the city we are mortgaging, we are uh, taking loans and buying things. The only difference is in the city with a job in your hand, you can mortgage your job, you can mortgage your land, you can mortgage your house. But in the village, what this man mortgages is his body. Because that is the only asset he has. So when he mortgages his body, what happens is that he has to sell his labor. He loses his freedom, he loses his freedom to do anything and he barters his labor for cash. So when there is an emergency, I have my sister's uh, wedding coming, give me 1 lakh rupees, he takes 1 lakh rupees and he signs a contract and he says that this 1 lakh rupee I will pay by blah 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 blah, in case I don't pay blah blah blah, I will work for you for 2 years. So he, uh, in return, he gives his body to so when you, there is an institution now in India which we will see called Nauka. The Nauka institution is a bonded laborer where you have actually surrendered your body to this landlord and he is free to call you anytime, ask you to do anything. You are not free, you are not, your body is not yours. Your body is like a slave. Basically, new form of uh, slavery. So it is a culture, I mean the Nauka institution not all the poor are working as Naukas but Nauka would be like about 5% of the population that we have surveyed would be Naukas, wage labourers, they are landless labourers, 
sometimes they also have land but still they can't they don't have resources to do that so um, that kind of a life of debt the what the so the question for us was what does basic income do to this such a huge phenomenon such a deep rooted phenomenon such a serious matter of uh, debt um, then the, there are two questions always come one is that the amount we have given is not so much that they can pay off their debt or they can buy themselves out of the debt it's not that much if you, you saw the amount of money we gave but then it has done psychologically something to them that they you could you can see the way they have perceived that here you can see the how the debt has increased from baseline to end line in a in the control village and here the the persons reporting that my debt has increased is not so high compared to the control village the persons who said my debt has reduced is definitely is much more than that's the perception shall we come to the next one yeah this is very very critical this is what i said the psychologically what it does what it has done what is the the whole idea of getting a basic income has done to these villagers was they have shifted from the harsher harsher forms of borrowing to softer forms of borrowing that's the first thing that came to their mind okay i have something coming to my uh, kitty so let me move so you know, what you see here is a very very interesting phenomenon we didn't expect this at all that the they have shifted see you can see the dependence on money lenders this is what we ask the dependence on money lenders has is considerably reduced and it has shifted to friends and neighbors and family and relatives which means instead of taking a loan from the money lender you go and take a loan from your neighbor and say give me this small loan and repay you next month because i'm getting my basic income or i will give 3 months basic income to you can you please lend me some money so your credit worthiness in the community increases as a result you don't you move away from the harsher employment next yeah he is uh, this is a picture of a nauka this man is a very interesting story when you say he has worked as a nauka for 35 years he was under the landlord for 35 years now when they in this modern times when you are working as a nauka when you have sold your body to uh, the landlord it is not that there is no tension you are constantly thinking when should i get out of this how can i get out of this is there a way in which i can get out of this now i am looking at the first opportunity that i can have to get out of this bondage so once the basic income started coming he quit the job after 6 months and then he said i will take a water contract many laborers they do a water contract because in the time of the the after the sowing the seed you have to keep watering so i take a contract from the landlord your 10 acres of land i will water whenever it is required usually in the rural areas they get power only in the night so in the night he has to go and water the so they taking that contract is much more honorable because you are your master than being under the landlord so you know the incrementally you try to loosen the constraints that are binding you let's move i think okay this is also about savings how it has increased i think uh, this further shall we go then health is a very important uh we can see the regularity of medicine it's more than actually being able to pay high costs in the hospital it's about chronic patients who don't take medicine because they don't have money so when you get this kind of thing then you say okay let me address first this one and let me at least take my diabetic or my hypertension medicine more regularly so that i can be healthy so that i can go to work properly and so on and so forth so this regularity of medicine is a very important outcome 
Um, and the first point of contact, I mean, the, the, the point is that usually people don't go to the doctor unless it becomes serious. They want to wait because if they go to the doctor, they know that they have to pay, they don't have the money, then they have to borrow, all that. So they mostly they do homeopathy or ask the local chemist or medical shop uh, and all that. But you can see that there has been a shift of more people going to the doctor and taking um, what you call in the technical, they call the more rational response to their illness. This is another very, very important and significant, yeah. I'm rushing through because we don't have much time, but we can continue to discuss. Even the house, uh, the amount of money they have put into the house. Can you come to the next one? Yeah. Her story is a fascinating story, Draupadi. The story of Draupadi is, her husband is a bonded laborer. Now, they wanted to have a house in the village. They are living outside the village, far away, which was not safe, especially when he goes to work. She has to live with five, she has five children. Now, they decided to build a house and they calculated that they required about 15,000 rupees to build the house. They had a piece of land in the village next to the pond. Now what she did was, why I'm saying she, because most of the time husband is absent. What she did was, she pulled the money that she had, she put the money together and saved about 3,000 rupees and then called her relatives. She bought the required thing, called her relatives, about three, four relatives came, they all put the base structure together and the skeleton and after that she and her husband did the, uh, this part and then the husband left and she alone, we were actually going to that village, she alone did the entire plastering of the house, inside, inside and outside the plastering. So she, then they moved to the new house and she was so happy and so proud of this new house which she said she cost her 15,000 rupees and monthly she was getting, because she had five children and husband and she, uh, seven people, 2,100 uh, rupees she was getting monthly. So what happened when they pulled the money is again a big story, we don't have time to go into it but it's a fascinating story. Uh, lastly. Uh, there are, this is a very important thing because the way this cash stimulated the village level uh, economy. What it has done in the village are very quite interesting things. One important thing is, I think I will take a little more time. Um, about 10 young men came together, they were getting money. I think this is a very important case for the youth study. 10 young boys came together and said that we are getting this money. Now we have a pond in the village, why don't we go buy some fish and put it in the pond? So they went to the market, bought the fish and put it in the pond. And uh, then they waited for six months and then uh, fish started coming and it became an informal cooperative. The best part of it is that it didn't cost them much. They took the ownership, the new cooperative was formed, they took the ownership of the fish and Fish was available, they were selling the fish in the village. Fish was available to the villagers, which is also nutrition. So that is the big story about the fishermen, you can see it in the book. Uh, cooperative, and that cooperative still continues. I think six months ago when I was there, I also met those boys. And then transportation started coming in because more people wanted to go to the uh, market to buy their uh, usual uh, uh, provisions. Then two new shops, you can see, actually we could see in front of our eyes, two new shops emerged in the village. And then, um, this is a very important point. They, the tribal culture, the tribal practice was there, which was discontinued. They revived that, saying that now that people have, everybody knows that everybody has some cash. They decided that for any ceremony, every household should contribute 100 rupees. So that the burden of that particular father or mother is uh, reduced. So, uh, because otherwise people used to give grain for the wedding, that is the tribal culture. This was very important. And then because of that, they also forced the family not to spend money on useless things. 
which is a, another big thing. The community was also making demand. Then this is uh, this is again the, the mobilizing of the community that when they know that um, more the cattle and the animals have doubled in the village, and during the summer the pond dries up, so they made a rule that particular summer that nobody will use the uh, water for irrigation this entire summer because animals are more and animals require water. This was a clear indication that the uh, number of animals have increased. This is a fisherman's cooperative. We have quickly run through. Come on, let's move ahead. This is the new vehicle that comes into the village. This is the new shop. Yeah. Yeah, this is the last portion. Just about five minutes, we'll close. What does all this mean, tell us about basic income? Okay. It's a big scientific study, but what is it, that final juice that is we are interested in? Yeah, thanks. It gives economic citizenship to the unpaid, underpaid, and invisible labor. The care work that happens in the house, the work that old people do, the work that children do, all that goes as if it is the most normal thing that gets unpaid. So they are, all of them become citizens and they are entitled to a basic income. They, it gives them a psychological thing. Yeah, individual payments make a big difference because even a small child says, yes, that is my money. It is with my money this house was built. It is with my money that you went and bought the um, grain today. Mama, where is my money? Give me my money, I want to buy some coffee. So, you know, that kind of uh, conversations you could see in the uh, village. Yeah. Monthly, uh, monthly payment is the real cutting edge because uh, it provides, um, because I, we were spending most of our time in the villages, it provides a future orientation to people. I, I will not go to the extent of saying it gives them a future, but poor, they think from day to day, one day to another. Today I have something to eat, tomorrow let's see, will I get a job, will I get work or not. But when you give a monthly basic income, when you know for the next two years, I am going to get every month this amount of money. I start planning, I start calculating, I start saying that, okay, three, four months money, I will put it into this. So this is, this is the thing that even though the money was small, uh, this is what it, so monthly is very important. Next, uh, the liquidity factor. See, uh, because there is liquidity, because you don't have liquidity, normally you go and borrow. Most of the farmers, most of the small farmers, they don't have liquidity. They don't run around with cash in their pockets or in the banks. They don't have. A doctor near in a group, in a group of women, a group of villages, gives credit to the patients. So I can go to a doctor near the village and say that he has a book, he writes down and he takes his money from you only when your harvest comes. So they don't have liquidity. But when you infuse, that is the cause, not having liquidity is also the cause of their indebtedness, their heavy indebtedness. So the cost of borrowing seeds and fertilizers for a farmer, day and dubna are the practices there. Day is that you pay one and a half. I take one bag of seed from the landlord, I will pay one and a half. I pay, I have, there is another system of Dugna which is double. I pay 10 bags, I take 10 bags of seed, I repay 20 bags. So it is that kind of thing. So when you don't borrow, though you have control over your agriculture cycle, you can get out of the debt trap and gain freedom to sell in the market. Because there is also a bond that you sign with the landlord that I am borrowing this grain from you, I will sell my produce to you. What, can you just go back? What is that? Yeah, and landlords thrive on this bondage. 
So, uh, that's what I mean. Uh, the summary is that the emancipatory value of the basic income is much greater than the monetary value. That monetary value maybe is just uh, 500 rupees or 1000 rupees, but when you actually see the impact, that is the reason we were ourselves very shocked at the impact it has had because of the what it does to the mind, what it does to people when they receive a basic income. Next. It gives dignity. I think it's a whole chapter is there in the book on elderly, what it has done to the elderly. Why I say dignity only to the elderly is because they are all dependent on their sons, their children. And those elderly people, even if they are unwell, they will not tell because the son will shout at her that you are always unwell, you are always a burden on me. So, okay, next time we will go later, I will come back in the evening and take you to the doctor. So it is uh, it's such an insulting thing to tell the son that I am not well, take me to the doctor. So the first thing that some of these older women have done with their basic income was to go, it, it cost them 50 rupees to get a shot. They call it pitch curry. They, go, they get an injection. It could be steroids, it could be anything. Some injection they get. They say if they get that injection, for two weeks, they are perfectly all right and they can walk around. And they can do it with their own money. So that was a very important thing. Yeah, next one. Yeah, the disabled, it was a very moving uh, statement that uh, this person, uh, who is a recipient, said that what this basic income for you means. He said, it's like the unconditional love of my mother. Next. Yes, basic income is a good idea. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, my uh, question is, uh, this system of, uh, of uh, bonded laborers, essentially slavery, is there any movement to make that illegal and get get rid of get rid of indentured servitude or whatever you call it? Yeah, but it's it is illegal. Actually, it is illegal. But these are all informal contracts. They are hardly written contracts. Actually, the bonded labor is banned by the Indian government. But it's not enforceable. Most of the time, it's not enforceable. It is uh, I mean, if, unless it is in a crude way happening and also unless uh, there is an NGO which can go and actually uh, ensure that the official machinery actually takes action, it, it goes caught free. And uh, this happens in most of the states in the remote places much more uh, than uh, in the vicinity of the city. But it's very much there. It's a very, very uh, live phenomenon. Yeah, 그 여기 보니까 2014년에 실험을 마친 걸로 나와 있는데요. 그 실험을 마친 이후에 매달 지급되던 현금이 없어지게 된 상황이 된 거잖아요. 그렇게 됐을 때그 주민들의 변화랄까 이런 반응이랄까 이런 건 어떤지 궁금합니다. Yeah, actually that is the most disturbing part of any experiment like this, but. Uh... We have taken their consent, but in any case, when we, uh, like, uh, I think it's a process. When we stopped the money, it was really, really very, um, what, what should I say, um, a bad feeling for the entire population because we have been visiting, we have been going back. So when we uh, extended it by five months, they were very extremely happy. But then we finally kept on telling them that this is, an experiment and uh, it cannot continue but the only thing is that everybody should ask the government to do this. So we should have some kind of, we should make the political parties to initiate this. So you talk to your political leaders uh, uh, whenever they come here. So that is the, that is the, uh, the only thing. I think uh, definitely the, the processes that they would have set into motion they probably would have tried in various ways to continue. If somebody has started a, an entrepreneur, a small shop or something, they would have tried to continue. But um, 
the so far only we could go. Have I answered the question? Oh, it's you are so to say a chugan and a man there. The song, the key, Kajon Chugudere, Hime, Panaga, the Suki Gandine, or the key Panenzi, from Kumanita. Um, as far as uh, Seva is concerned, I think uh, it, the whole process of uh, doing this experiment actually affected Seva also uh, in terms of uh, what kind of work it should uh, uh, take up in future or in its own strategic thinking was affected by it because uh, basic income has become a really an important thing on the agenda of the union uh, that how to take this forward in the country. Uh, at every given opportunity and also the programs and the projects because the members also start now demanding uh, different kinds of things. Earlier with the unionization was restricted to accessing welfare schemes and also uh, trying to make bring about changes in the policy. But then now I think uh, the, the members are also asking for interventions in their day-to-day -day livelihoods that we have been so active in this uh, project. So that is a demand I think you, your union is also not able to cope with that uh, so many members trying to ask that why don't you do some, something similar because it has done such good things in those villages. So that is in the process. But then um, one, impo one important development was the new government which is not favorable to SEVA actually has uh, not allowed SEVA to really take this forward. But I think with time we are hoping that we will really take this idea uh, forward. Yeah, I think uh Kadari was I think you give up the Piana by Sisman to my Yeah, actually all oh, this the uh, that, I, that is one slide I missed out in this. Um, two things happened in this, uh, regarding education. One is that the household spending on school, on school children and their uh, private tuition or for them is one important, uh, the spending on school has increased in, within the household compared to over a period of these 18 months. The, the second is that we also checked the records of the uh, schools from the beginning and the end and in the middle uh, and also the grades of the uh, children that there's been a significant improvement both in attendance and also in their uh, grade system but then the grade system is one thing that we really could not take up in a very big way because uh, government grade system is not seen as something very reliable. So we, that is the reason why we, but the attendance part is something that we actually, is, uh, you can see it in the book also, that attendance improved because, uh, because of the various dynamics, as I said that it has stimulated certain dynamics into the family, the household life and their work life of the parents. Because of which I think the, that resulted in the Children, more children going to school more regularly. I think that is something that the case studies also have brought out. So, we have a lot of people who have been doing a lot of things. We have a lot of people who have been doing a lot of things. We have a lot of people who have been doing a lot of things. 의식이, 의식이 변화했거나 실제로 그런 어떤 뭐 여러 변화 그뭐 행동의 변화들이 있었을 것도 같은데요. 그런 점에 좀 알고 싶습니다. Well, I think it was too short a time to, but I think in terms of consciousness, I think they, the one major difference people saw and it has made some difference to them is about the way they started looking at the government programs. They feel, they felt that it is, when we asked this question in the villages, they said, this is one of the best 
they thought it is welfare scheme. This is one of the best welfare schemes we have seen because it was so regular and it was so simple and uh, there was no corruption involved in this. So which means it has reached people. They were comparing this with the government uh, schemes. As a result, I think they started making more demands on the government local officials saying that look at this scheme, it is possible to make something efficient. It is possible to deliver something without corruption. So why can't you do the same with your public distribution system? That is one kind of uh, consciousness that we could uh, actually see that people, uh, the second thing as Seva we could see in these villages, people are now much more willing to come out to go for a political action or to go to the district collector to demand something. They feel that it is something is possible. The sense of possibility. Otherwise, if you see, there is a whole sense of impossibility. When, you, when a group of people start feeling that nothing is possible in this place, nobody listens to me. If I lose my uh, poverty card, there's no way I can replace that card because nobody listens to me. So in terms of consciousness, I would, for, the, for such a short project, I would say those are, that is one thing. And the other I would say is the within the family, intra-family intra dynamics. Within the family, the discussions about the household uh, expenditure, where the money is going, where it is coming from, I think there is much more discussion than in the past. Because women had, some of the women who were earlier not earning wage income, when they started earning the wage income, this whole process of one and a half years of these discussions that my money, I am giving. Now, where is this money going to go? What are you going to do? Now, Papa, you have your money, you don't need your money. So, there was one family where four girls were there, the four uh, older girls. They were all getting their money, but then they said, Papa, you, you give your money also to us because you anyway waste your money smoking a cigarette or going out and drinking with your friends. So you give the money. So they took their papa's money and also their father's brother's money and then or they pulled the money together and they bought a sewing machine for themselves. So which means that it has generated a discussion within the family. Otherwise, normally it's the father or whoever earns decides where to spend the money, what to do with the money. Now this kind of a democratic space uh, about economic citizenship, what we would call it, is a very significant thing in terms of consciousness. Yes. Sewa ga oton jojiginji, I'm sorry, 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 uh, of uh, women who are working in the informal sector. See, we have this uh, division in the country which is no longer valid now. Formal sector is one where in the workers who are working in the factories, people who are working in the government who have regular jobs, permanent jobs, who will retire with a pension. The, that is the formal sector. And then the, the rest is all informal sector. It is ridiculous that in, in India, the formal sector is now reduced to about 4 or 5 percent of the working population and the 95 percent are working in the informal sector. Now, informal sector includes agricultural workers, construction workers, street vendors, domestic workers, all workers, all kinds of workers who do not have good con regular contracts, whose work is casual in nature, who uh, do not have legal rights to protect their employment. It is these women that Seva has been working last 40, 40 50 years. Now, uh, it, has, it is now recognized as a national trade union center along with the other uh, unions. The most uh, important political activities is that the, the Seva actually is the one which is articulating the interests of these women. For example, there was a massive bill that was presented to the parliament on street vendors. Now we have a national policy on street vendors. 
and this construction workers bill which is meant to give uh, welfare to construction workers is also something the same was part of that so at a policy level quite a lot of uh, things and also the fact that workers in the informal sector are not considered as workers with any rights the whole point of seva has been to bring to the notice of governments saying that these are also workers they also have rights they also require welfare they also require protection so at various state state level and also at the central federal level that seva has been advocating this kind of an important point on all these workers in some parts of the country because it has 2 million members in some parts of the country seva also has some with business enterprises but bulk of its activity is the political activity in terms of policy in terms of day to day uh, addressing members questions and issues and uh, making the governments start recognizing these workers that is briefly seva's work